MTD CNC, bringing you the latest engineering news, reviews, events, and special offers via video media. Dan, I'm interested in what the Roma Absolute Arm does. Okay, uh, Roma Absolute Arm is a portable CMM, so you can take this to your job as opposed to kind of taking your job to the, the CMM. So it can save on time, but primarily it's for inspection, reverse engineering, rapid prototyping, uh, wind tunnel analysis, that type of thing really. Okay, so how does it actually work? When we talk about it being portable, how do you get the, the data from, from this to the PC? How does all that work? There's a, there's a couple of wires, um, uh, mainly an Ethernet wire if you're scanning and a, a USB wire if you're probing, but you can do all that wirelessly. So um, in short, you've got a, a range of encoders on your arm that work through triangulation to create a point. So points can be turned into features, um, features that are then compared to CAD models or anything like that. Um, alternatively, you can use a, a laser head um, and you can collect uh, um, lines of points which then become point cloud. So on a, on a line of points you may have a, a thousand points, but this will capture at 250,000 points a second. So as you're going along you, you're getting a hell of a lot of data which formulates a very, very basic um, 3D model to start with. Okay, so you can use this for reverse engineering as well? Yeah, yeah. Um, you can take this to uh, a complete CAD model, if you like. But at the, f uh, the first point, you'll capture a, an STL, which is a, a triangulated point cloud. Um, once you've got a triangulated point cloud, you can put uh, nerves patches on it, a surface on it, and, and then you will get a dumb solid. And alternatively, you can take that, ST it's what's called an STL, and you can take that into um, a rapid prototyping 3D printing machine. Um, or you can take that into just basic CAD and start to build up a, a parametric model from it. So what's the target audience for this? Who would buy this type of product? Um, it's a massive range, to be honest. Anybody from the automotive industry, aerospace, uh, heritage. We've got them in dental. Um, we've got them in people like the, um, the particle accelerator at CERN. They use things like this and, and some of our other equipment. Um, and the accuracy, what you can achieve from what you're measuring? Depending on, on the size of the arm, because the, the bigger you go with an arm, the more potential error you have within its sphere. Um, so uh, a small arm, probably something like a two meter arm, you will get around 20 microns. Uh, a large 4.5 meter arm, you're probably talking around 120 microns. But that's worst case error within its sphere. Um, scanning is a little bit less accurate um, because you're just collecting more data, so there's more potential error. But again, if you're working in a smaller environment, um, you will get better accuracy. Just like a classic static CMM, you have a, a cumulative error. Within a, a, a working sphere of an arm, you tend to have a, a radial error, where it, it, as you go further out, um, you can potentially cause more error. Okay, Dan, let's see a demo. Okay, great. I'll just um, turn it on to scan, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So all I've got on screen at the moment is a, uh, a scan that I've taken earlier and turned that into a, a mesh. So I've used that as a, a reference object, so that, that would be like the CAD model. So I, I'm not sure whether you can see, but I've got basically uh, two, two lines here. Now that red line on here, will, as I go across the surface, it will pick up a point cloud um, and generate points. Once I've got a load of points, I'll be able to compare those to the reference object, which would be like comparing to uh, a CAD model. So all what's happening on screen now is we're capturing lots and lots of points, which you can see the, uh, the point counter in the top left hand. Once I've got a, a, a near enough replica, I'll compare the two to each other. So it doesn't matter which order you do this in? Not at all. Um, you can be fully, fully kind of flexible with how you scan. And even if you went back over a, a previous uh, surface, would it pick up that you're doing that? Yeah, it would pick it up, but it, it doesn't matter. The, the software will actually filter out points on top of points. Um, you can clean points out once you've got a, a point cloud. Um, but as you can see now, I'm scanning. I'm scanning over the top of points, but it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't create a, a, a thickness. It just creates another point on top, and then once we've finished it, we'll clean those all up.
because I can see you, you've got some blank areas and that's what you're trying to fill in. That's exactly it, yeah. It's, it's just like colouring in. Um, capture as much data as you can in the areas where you've got little, uh, little holes. Just go over them and fill them in more. So what are we going to do now? Have a look at the results. Yeah, basically. Um, all as we've got now is we've got, got the reference, as I've said, and we've got the, um, the point cloud. So now we're just going to stitch those two together. It's an automatic stitch, one button, um, and once those two are stitched together, we're going to put a colour map on, which will show a deviation from the reference object, which would be like your CAD model, to the, the part. So this could, be a, this could be in a batch of 100 parts, and you're comparing each one of those to their, their master. A cab file. We've got a, a part for a vehicle here, but it wouldn't matter what the part is, would it? It could be a, a tool from a tool maker, you could then reverse engineer. Yeah, not at all. Um, absolutely anything, really. Um, as long as you can get line of sight from your laser to your part, um, then you can scan anything you want. Um, anything from rubbers, uh, foams, um, gloss parts. They, this, this laser will cope with absolutely anything um, from chromes to matte whites to anything in between. The only things you won't be able to scan yet unfortunately are uh, very translucent material and waters at the moment. <laughs> Still not quite there but we will get there one day. So everything else? Everything else, yeah. Brilliant, Dan thank you very much, fantastic insight. No problem, thanks for your time. For more videos, products and news go to mtdcnc.com or follow MTD online on Twitter.